On this, the July 28th, 2023 edition of What's Going On With Shipping, we have an update on the fire raging on the car carrier Fremantle Highway just north of the Netherlands in the North Sea. Hi, I'm your host, Sal Mercaglano, and welcome to today's episode. So we have updates from the Dutch Coast Guard regarding the fa- uh, the uh, vessel, the Fremantle Highway. It is now under tow by the tug Fair Play 30. They have been able to switch the tow over to a larger vessel, and more importantly, a better tow rig than what they initially had. They had gotten a temporary rig on board to keep the vessel away from drifting ashore and out into the shipping lanes, but with the decrease in temperature being reported by the Dutch Coast Guard and also with the less smoke on board, they've been able to board the vessel via the vessel Multisalver 4, get the new tow line on. This shows you the track line of Fair Play 30. We don't have a track line on Fremantle Highway. Their AIS went out when the bridge was encumbered. The plan right now by the Coast Guard is to keep the vessel between the Dutch coast and the main shipping route. Uh, The main shipping route runs this way. They want to keep it obviously off these protected shoals, not have it drift ashore and have an environmental impact. So right now they're waiting for the vessel to cool down before they can do anything further. These are some recent images taken by the Dutch Coast Guard of the vessel before they were able to get it under tow with the Fair Play 30. One of the big stories came out is that K-Lines, the operator of the vessel, has revised the figures of cars on board. Initially, they reported of the 3,783 vehicles on board, 25 of these were electrical vehicles. However, they are now reporting that it is 498 electrical vehicles on board. That's out of a max capacity of about 6,000 vehicles could be carried on board. So a much larger percentage of electrical vehicles on board. We do not know 100% what vehicle started this fire. There was an initial report from crew members that the fire started on the car deck and that it was an EV. However, that is not confirmed. What we do know is looking at these images right here is you can see where the fire has ripped through the decks. Each of these show you the decks of the vessel. This is the side port ramp right here. You see it's gotten down pretty low in the forward areas. It is ripped up through the main area up on the main deck. This is the accommodation area. This is where the CO2 storage area would be. This is the bridge up here. And one of the things to note here is that both lifeboats are on board. Uh, I had initially believed that one lifeboat had gotten off, but that's not the case, which means that the crew, when they had to evacuate, they were either heloed off or had to jump. Hopefully they were able to jump from down here at the accommodation ladder, but if they were trapped above the fire deck and couldn't get down, then this jump from a really high level would have been almost fatal. And we know that one of the Indian crew members on board did die as a result of that. Here you can see some of the salvers are getting on board to get that tow line on. You can see a vessel alongside. Right now the ship has a pronounced starboard list. This is probably from some of the initial firefighting effort where they sprayed a lot of water on the vessel. The water would rain down into the vessel, get stuck, the pumps are not running, and so you're having what's called a free service effect as that water gets down through the ventilation shafts. It will sit on the decks and you'll see it. These are some earlier images of the vessel back when it was suffering the fire. You can see the more heavier smoke at the time, but notice that burn pattern through this midships area of the vessel, uh, up on the decks, all the way down into the bow area, and how this fire really ravaged it. Again, earlier image showing putting water directly on the fire, trying to get the hull cooled to prevent the spread of this fire. One of the images I want to show you here was a thermal image that was taken of the vessel. It is a real good indicator of how hot this vessel got. This is it right here. You can see how the heat has radiated through the vessel. This area back here on the stern is where the engine room is. The big fear is that the fire will get into the engine room and start melting pipes and and seals and start flooding water in and that could be the end of the vessel should they begin should it begin to flood in the engine room this is what we saw happen with the felicity ace last year off the coast of the azores we know the operator of the company of the ship k-line has contacted they have smith salvage smith bocalis which did the um 
the salvage of Ever Given. Ironically, Ever Given's owner is the same owner as the Fremantle Highway. So Smith Bocalis is on scene right now. They're assisting with this. The initial call went out for immediate aid, but Smith Bocalis will do the salvage. They also have a firefighting team from the Port of Rotterdam on standby. They are excellent shipboard firefighters. So if they need to get on board the vessel, they can do that. Obviously, Getting on board the vessel is very precarious at this point. That starboard list, the fact that the vessel is still on fire, they do, do not want to board the vessel until they know they can stabilize it, which will probably mean towing it into shallower water where they can get on board on and off the vessel quickly in protected waters. But at the same time, they don't want to bring it into protected waters and it roll over and sink. The other issue I want to talk about real quickly is why car carriers seem to be having a lot of these fires. A great story over in G-Captain, Mike Schuller did a great retrospective on recent fires on board car carriers. I'll have the link in the show notes. I'll be doing a long episode probably this weekend on that, breaking it down. But there are two factors that have really, I would argue, made car carriers more susceptible to car to car fires. Number one, EVs. Now, I've been getting tons of notes from people sitting there saying that EVs are safer than internal combustion engine cars. And that's true. If you look at the numbers, the, the number of fires on board is much less. There is no doubt that EV vehicles are much safer than internal combustion engines in going up in, uh, on fire. However, the issue isn't that they start the fire, it is that they are on board vessels, and when they do catch fire, they are much more dangerous than internal combustion engine fires because of the power and the lithium ion and all the different specifics. And let's be clear about something. I am not a freaking scientist that can tell you about lithium ion technology. I am a firefighter, I'm a mariner, I'm telling you about how they impact the ship. And I know for a fact they burn hotter, they burn longer, and they're a pain in the butt to put out because you can't put them out. They got to burn out basically. And when you put these on board ships, they create problems. And so as the advent of EVs and hybrids are being put on vessels, whether or not they're the cause of the fire doesn't matter. But once they ignite, they are a bear to put out and that creates the bigger problem. The second issue is the nature of car carriers. In the 1990s, car carriers went underwent a change. So I had somebody comment about the fact is, why don't you just jettison these vehicles off? That's impossible. You can't do that. These car carriers, and this is an image of a ship called the Cougar Ace, very similar to Fremantle Highway, are basically enclosed boxes. Imagine a car deck with steel decks, steel floors, steel ceilings, steel sides. And you basically fill this thing up from the lower deck, deck one, all the way up to the upper deck. You cannot lower a ramp and drive these things off into the sea. Number one, the ramps aren't designed for that. You can't jettison the ramps. This is not movies. It doesn't work that way. Let alone, you don't have the crew to do this. And more importantly or not, they're vehicles bumper to bumper, door to door against these vehicles. You have, again, a, a ship that can carry, in the case of Fremantle Highway, she's loaded with 3,783 vehicles. She can actually carry up to over 6,300 vehicles on board. And these vehicles are stacked in the decks, and it's just miserable to get to. The other issue is in the 1990s, the rules changed regarding car carriers. Most ships have compartmentalization. In other words, you have basically bulkheads that split the vessel into what we call holds. And if you look at a container ship, it has the slices for the containers. If you look at a bulk carrier, it has compartments for the grain or the ore. Same thing for tankers. You have those compartmentalizations. You don't have that on a car carrier. Literally, from the stern of the vessel to the bow of the vessel is unobstructed. There are no bulkheads here. And the reason they did that is a couple of things. Number one, they made it so that these ramps that connect the decks can be hoisted up and secured. So now you provide the protection lengthwise across the vessel instead of basically vertically. And you isolate the decks. Great, fantastic, you isolate the decks. 
Uh, you can secure the ventilation, the influx of air, and the output of air. And then up on the main deck up here, you'll have these big low-pressure CO2 tanks that can be used to flood different zones of the vessel, different decks. And that was the suppression system that was given up. And the reason they did this is very clear. Let me, let me be 100% with you on this one. Don't listen to what anyone else says. The reason they did this is money, cost. When you put bulkheads in here, you slow the loading, you, you slow the unloading, and you can't carry as many cars. And because of the track record of ships up until about the 90s, which was pretty good, they decided to remove those bulkheads. Well, everything changes with EVs and just pure car technology anyway. We're loading a lot more vehicles than ever before. We have increased the rate of loading these vehicles and the voyages of these ships. And so what we've seen manifest in these vessels are stability issues. Uh, we've seen a lot of these vessels roll over. Golden Ray down in Brunswick, Georgia is a good example of that. But we've also seen fire. When you had traditional cars, 1990s, 2000 ver versions of cars, you flood the deck with CO2, you knock it out. I should also mention in the 90s, we had something great called Halon. Halon was great for firefighting, terrible for the environment, but great for firefighting. It breaks the fire chain. It's, it's fantastic. Halon is is great. The problem with Halon is when you dump Halon, you create a hole in the ozone, like right above you. It's really bad for the environment. So we got rid of Halon off the ships. But Halon was going to be the, 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 you know, the firefighting agent. Halon, get rid of the bulkheads, fantastic. Well, we got rid of Halon because of environmental issues. Cars change dramatically. A lot more composite material, plastics and chemical-based material in cars, vice the old steel frames. And then you add EVs into it, vehicles that burn hotter and longer. And now car carriers are exceptionally dangerous. I mean, just exceptionally dangerous. So much so that unless you can get the initial car fire out quickly, either by the ship's crew or the stevedores that are loading, unloading the vessel, you've got to seal the decks up and fight a very defensive fire. You've got to flood the deck with CO2, but that's not even going to extinguish it because lithium ion is not going to go out always in CO2. It's not going to get cooled down. The oxygen displacement is not going to be enough to knock out the lithium ion because it self-generates. And what you have is a runaway fire, and you can't get it. And then you're in a defensive structure where you're fighting the fire from above and below. You've got to cool the deck above and below. But... Typically on shipboard firefighting, you get above, below, and side to side. You can't do that on this vessel because you don't have bulkheads anymore. And so you basically have these huge open deck areas on board and you're stacking cars like crazy on board. And once one fire happens, you've got 600 to 700 feet of open deck that's going to get encumbered very quickly. And this creates the big problem. So this is the issue we're seeing on these car carriers right now. Putting that video together that's going to look at car carrier fires and stability issues and sinkings over the past decade or so, there's a lot of them, uh, and there's a lot of issues behind them that we'll talk about and examine. But again, if you want to stay up to date on what's going on with this, I'll have down in the show notes below the link to the Dutch Coast Guard blog. They are updating this pretty daily with videos and pictures. It's a great source to follow. It's in Dutch, but they have the English translation available for you. Uh, and of course, follow this channel. I'll do updates to this video in the pin note down below. I'll also post any stories relevant to those of you that subscribe and follow me on Twitter at Mercogliano S. If you enjoyed today's video, hey, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. Leave a comment, share it across social media, and if you can, give it a thumbs up. If you can also support the page. How do you do that? You can hit that super thanks button down below or head on over to Patreon and become a patron, either monthly or yearly. Until our next episode, this is Sal signing off.